All right, today we're talking about how to take an API and build a security mechanism around it. Okay, so last time we got the basics of an API going, that is getting data and inserting data. But let's say we wanna have not just a publicly accessible database where anyone can insert, anyone can get information, but rather one that's mildly protected, whether that's protected via just having to know a string, maybe having to register for an account. There is a number of different ways that you could uh, secure your, your API. And we're gonna go through a few of the basics here. That is, we're gonna go through just like having a string that someone has to know. We're gonna go through having a bit of an access code and then a little bit more of an advanced look at an access code. So let's jump into starting with the basics. <laughs> Okay, so we had uh, this website last time. It was the codingarm.com forward slash the API dev forward slash request.php. And we were writing in like request type equals get info and ID equals one. Now, what if we want to make sure that someone is supposed to have access to this? That is, rather than just stumbling across it randomly, being able to at least verify that, hey, I've had to give this code out to someone in order for them to know. Now, what we could do is including in these parameters where we've got the re request type equals get info and the ID equals one, we could then bring in uh, a another string. We could have uh, access token equals, and it would help if I spelled access correct, access token equals, hey, this is my access token code. And let's say that in order for someone to make a request to the server, they have to have typed in this specific parameter with this very specific uh, type, uh, with this very specific string. What we can do is we can uh, basically go to our code. So let's bring up Sublime, and where we have uh, the ability to make the actual request. So we've got our functions where we're inserting the data, where we're reading the data. What we can do is we can make a request before that and make another function which is effectively verify access token. So let's do that. So let's add another function to our script here called verify access token. And we're not gonna pass it anything in. And what we're effectively doing is we're looking to see uh, the, the string that we're expecting to be provided, uh, whether it's been provided in the right format. So in this, we're gonna have a default return of false. So basically, if for some reason we get to the end of the script, uh, we are just going to return a basic default false. That is, it didn't verify. But inside here, what we need to do is make sure we get the data. So that is uh, requesting for the access token. And what we're going to do is we're going to use that get the data function, which we wrote last time, which just a quick reminder effectively looks for someone who's set that in as a post item. And if that's empty, then looks to see if it's in a get item. And if neither of those return, then it just returns an empty string. So we're going to get the data on access token. And that's going to give us our string. And then we can effectively just do if the access token that is being sent equals, hey, this is my access code, access token code, then we can set the return to be true. And so that way you know that, hey, this is actually uh, a valid session and this person is allowed to access the site. So what we need to do is, um, is effectively request that function at the start. So uh, access granted equals verify access token. And there we're effectively just gonna have uh, if access, sorry, if access granted equals true then we're going to go through and do the rest of our functions as we did before. And let's just indent that. And so that is a real basic level uh, verification now in play. Okay, so moving on from the basic level verification, what we can do is actually we can have, uh, rather than just a one static string, which anyone could guess, anyone could share between themselves, uh, what we could do is add another level uh, of verification where instead of it just being a static string, we could have uh, a table in our database. So if I just bring up Chrome again, we could have our database here, which has our API information in it. We can have another table 
which is uh, effectively a verification, an API verification or a API access code uh, table. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new table in here called uh, API access and we're just going to hit go. And in here, what we're going to want to have is an identifier just so that we have an order incrementing identifier. That's cool. Uh, we're going to have the actual access token itself, uh, which I'm just going to make a varchar here. Could be any format that we want though. Uh, we're going to have a creation creation date, uh, which is a date time. And we could have uh, a few different things here, but I'm going to have uh, a last, last access date as well. Now, what, what you could also include here is things like uh, expected IP address. Uh, you could also uh, have just country, expected country, like you could do an IP lookup of wherever the server is that's requesting. It, it comes down to how much security and how much lockdown you want to have. Because what, what I'm doing here is I'm creating an ID with an access token, creation date and last access date, just so we can see the usage uh, of, of the actual API uh, token. But you can also include things like account, how many times have they been used this month, um, yeah, what location, what IP address. You could include a whole range of information that would effectively allow it to be more secure. And things like the IP address lockdown definitely makes it um, way more secure, but also brings in challenges for servers that allow for dynamic IP addresses. So, you know, there, there are very big challenges if you go one route versus another route. For this, we're going to keep it real basic and have just an identifier, an email address, uh, sorry, an access token itself. Things like email address, user details, like you could include those on the access. Uh, probably makes more sense to have actual users in your system. But let's go real basic here. So we've got API access table now here. We're going to insert just a couple of entries. Uh, so we're going to have uh, access token one and access token two. And uh, the creation date I'm just going to make today at midnight because <laughs> that's the default. And yep, and we're going to hit go so that it inserts the two new two new rows. And so we've got ID one and ID two with the different access tokens. So right now, if I was to try and use an access token, it's not going to be usable because we're not looking at the database at the moment. So let's go back to the script and let's now write some code to actually do that. So we're going to comment out this verify access token. Uh, actually, just this part here. We're going to comment that out because we're no longer going to just use that set string. What we're going to do is we're going to query the database and effectively try to use that. So what we're going to be doing is some, again, basic SQL queries. Uh, there's nothing crazy. Same as last time, if you wanted to try crack this, you could easily uh, SQL inject and things like that. This is really basic uh, access level usage. So we're going to use the SQL API access. So we're selecting from API access where the access, where the access token equals the access token that we have requested here. And so we're going to make a query to the database and if it's empty, so if it's not empty, then we're going to set return as true because that means there's an entry inside the database that matches. And then we're going to return. And that's it. That's actually all we're doing here. We're effectively just checking to see if there's an entry in the database for that specific access token that we've uh, looked for uh, from the either the get request or from the post data and then we're trying to basically say hey is this valid or not and so we're just assuming that if there's an access token uh, in the database then we want to prevent uh, provide them access you could do things like having is this access token uh, on right now like is it active uh, because people might want to activate deactivate their access token and so you just want to change your uh, your SQL statement to match that in that it looks for a little flag or it, or it checks only when maybe it only allows access when it's less than 10 usages or something like that and so you'd want to change how that works then. and so
for this though, that is uh, the real basic level of then having a database that allows you to drive uh, access tokens, multiple access tokens for end users. Okay, and so what we're gonna now do is actually just add a little bit more security on. That is, rather than just being me being able to jump into the database and see, oh, here's access token one, two, three, and, and be able to see every single entry, we're just gonna encrypt it slightly. So we're gonna uh, go through and go to the edit screen for these. And next to the uh, access token field here in PHP My Admin, not sure about other systems, but PHP My Admin specifically, there's this drop down function. Uh, that lets you choose anything in here and we're going to choose md5 now md5 is effectively a way to encrypt the information that is it's a one-way encryption where you can uh, encrypt the string and it'll always turn out the same so if we see here uh, we've got this 2860013 and ends in baa if we change this back to access token one and we actually go through that same process so we go edit again and go MD5, no, not L trim, MD5, uh, we'll get the exact same result back out. So I'll just copy and pasted it before. And if I paste that back in, you can see the, the two strings are actually the exact same. Uh, and that is how an MD5 uh, hasher works. That is, it will pass it in the exact same each time. So that, sure you could effectively try guess uh, but that's going to take a long time to try and guess those and the longer the access token the much harder it becomes and the more random that access token it becomes impossible so uh, it's a uh, it's it's a very handy way to at least slightly encrypt your information uh, along with this what we're going to do as well is we can actually build in some slight structure to the access tokens as well that is we are going to have a uh, usage count and we're just going to do it in the same table. Um, this definitely isn't uh, the cleanest of setups uh, because typically I'd recommend to have a second table where it's actually uh, access usage. Uh, but for this, we're just going to we're just going to play around. So uh, we've got usage count, and we're going to have max usage uh, or usage max, just to keep it consistent. Uh, and what this is going to allow us to do is set hey, this access token can only be used X amount of times before it uh, cancels out. And then maybe once a month, once a week, however your API actually works, you can then go through and uh, clear it out. So I'm gonna say, hey, this access token only has a max of 10 uses, and this one has a max of, say, four, uh, for whatever <laughs> reason you want. Uh, what we then do is every time that uh, API is, uh, every time the access token is accessed, we're incrementing that usage count by one. So let's jump across to uh, to Sublime and let's get this code in place. So in the verify access token, we're now going to slightly change um, the process. So rather than returning true, what we actually want to return is uh, the first result. Uh, and we want to return the ID. Uh, is my ID lowercase or uppercase? Lowercase. So we want to return the ID back to the user. Um, and that way, what we're going to be able to do is then increment the usage. So uh, we're effectively going to say if the access granted uh, equals, uh, doesn't equal false. So if it doesn't equal false, then we want to run another function called increment increment usage and so what we're going to do is we're going to send through the access granted and increment access usage we need to write a function for that so we've got function and we're going to do that and i'm actually going to change this so we're, we're not going to just return the id we're actually going to just return that first result so if that doesn't equal false, so if it didn't equal false from up here, then we've got an array of elements. And in here, we're going to have the ID access token object because we've sent that through. So we've got the access granted, which is that object. So it has like the ID, the usage, the last use date, 
um, and we're going to send that through in this increment access usage so that we can get things like the ID out. So, so we're going to go ID equals that, uh, the usage count equals the usage count, and we're also going to have the max usage, usage max. And so what we're then going to need to do is we're going to need to increment the count, make sure that it's not going over the max, and if it isn't, then we're going to return, uh, we're, we're going to increment the database and return all that is uh, fine. So let me quickly write that code out and I'll come back to you. Okay, let's go through all the different things I went through just then to get to where we are now. So we have our little running function down the bottom here, which firstly checks to see if our token is uh, verified. Uh, it'll give us back the token object from the database which basically says, hey, if this isn't false, then let's go through and increment that access usage. And this is calling uh, this function, and this function is either returning a true or false. So if all went through fine, we have, uh, we have incremented successfully, then we're gonna go through and do the rest of the requests, like find out the request type, and then go through and do the insert or get information. So let's go through those each specific functions then, uh, starting with the verify access token. So here we are, we've got the verify access token just here, and the default return is false. We're then getting that access token from the user, whether it's via the post or the get request. We're then running a PHP function called MD5, which just takes that string from the access token puts it in an MD5 version so that it's ready then to go through and say, hey, I want to get the access token where the uh, access token equals this MD5 access token and give me the results if they're not empty. So then we're returning that access token so that we can then run through this next function, increment access usage. Now, this one, we have uh, the access token, which we just received from that previous function. And inside here, we're obtaining the ID, the usage count, and the usage max. Uh, we're then going through and doing some manipulation. So we're doing a new usage count. And that's just taking the usage count value that's currently in the database and incrementing by one. If uh, if that new usage count is less than or equal to the usage max, so that, that is like if it's less than 10 for that first example or four for the second one, then we wanna go through and run an SQL update. We wanna update the access, uh, so it gives the new last access date, the new usage count where the ID equals the ID of this uh, item. We're gonna go through, run that SQL query, assuming it all goes through fine, then we're going to set the return to true, and then we're going to return true. Uh, one piece as well here, we're missing the date. Uh, so we want to provide the latest, the last access date, which is right now. So we need to provide it in the format that's in the database, which is YMD HIS, which is year, month, day, hour, minute, second. And that's going to go through and if if all those executions work we're going to get a return true and we're going to return that back which then is going to allow us to continue through the function uh, of the running all the information so i'm going to go through i'm going to put the passwords all in and then i'm going to show you uh, running that query from the front end and what it looks like in the database okay so let's get into it let's actually go through an example Quickly before I did, uh, I just wanted to show you some slight changes I made to the code, uh, just to clarify things. Uh, in the verify access token, uh, I've added in this connection variable in the uh, definition. I've also done that in the increment access usage because I realized we weren't sending through an SQL uh, connection. So we, we need to send that through here so that we can uh, run the actual queries. Um, other slight changes, um, instead of it being if it's not empty, I'm using the MySQL number of rows, and if it's not equal to zero, uh, then we're going to return the first result and then just break out of that for each loop. Um, 
And so then a little bit of change in this main running function where the connection needs to be run first and then we go through send the connection in uh, each of those corresponding uh, functions. So just some ever so slight changes uh, to code there. So let's go through and look at an example of it actually running. So we've got uh, the request, we're getting the get info and the ID equals one. And the access token here is, hey, this is my access token code. So we hit enter, nothing, no result. And that's because that's not one of the access tokens in the system. Uh, if you wanted uh, an actual result to show up here, like an error message, you could give uh, as much or as much, as much or as little detail as you'd like. Um, Obviously for more coders, they'd prefer more information, but then you sort of get into that danger zone of, well then if there's people trying to get into the system, they're gonna know a lot more information. So it could be uh, as generic as no match. You could go, this access token doesn't exist. You could go, this access token is over its usage. If it's over its usage, uh, so many different options, but let's go through, add one in that's actually in the system. So access token one, hit enter and we can now see the information. If we go into the database and we jump into the API access table itself, we can see in here now that this entry, which was the access token one, now has the usage count of one and the other one has a count of zero. So let's change the usage max to two. We're then gonna hit enter again to refresh the results and we're gonna refresh this table and now it has a usage count of two. And so if we do this again, if we hit refresh again, there's now no information. And that's because we're at our max usages. So if I refresh here again, no, no increment in count because it's over its max. So that's, that's a, a real basic demo of that in action. Again, you could provide more information back out. So you could provide error, error messages, whatever sort of information you feel is relevant to the user. Uh, but things like over the limits, things like this access token doesn't exist. These are pretty standard uh, practices and we'll we'll get into the actual response side of things in a future video. But this was just a real e simple example of a few different levels of uh, access tokens within an API. And so that's it. We've gone through, we've figured it all out. Guys, if you use this or have something very similar, like different methods, please, Tell me down in the comments, I'd love to hear from you. And until next time, I'll see you.